Hello and welcome to Unwind Sessions where right after my shift I give the highlights of my workday and answer any questions that might have been asked at a previous session. My name is Juan, I am an English-Spanish medical video remote consecutive interpreter with over four years of experience. Today is Monday, May 24th, 2021. Today I took a total of 33 sessions like always, um, always video sessions or always audio sessions. But today it was more um, video sessions than anything. Uh, there were not really some major highlights, but there was one important um, thing that I would like to talk about today. Uh, one of my major highlights that has nothing to do with interpreting, but more with a job, is that I forgot to clock in after lunch. So I logged out. Then when I came back from lunch, I completely forgot to log in and uh, it, I really hate it when that happens. But anyways, uh, um, I just have to be more careful. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention is a, a mistake in interpretation that I actually make, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of interpreters also make it because it's so general and it just flows right off the tip of your tongue so easily. And um, so let me mention it. And this is for English Spanish interpreters, of course. And one of the things is the word insurance. Now, when a patient, when a provider says insurance in English and I have to interpret it in Spanish, what I automatically say is seguro. Now, if you're familiar with what a seguro is in Mexico, of course, it is insurance, but like for um, 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 Spanish speaking people uh, in the United States, whenever you say seguro, it doesn't necessarily mean insurance, it could actually also mean social security. So sometimes when I f interpret insurance, I actually say seguro, and the LEP thinks that uh, they're talking about the um, social security, right? So you can already see how this creates a problem. And this has happened before, but I never really paid much attention to it. I would just clarify with, with the um, uh, provider that uh, I interpreted it as seguro, but that could also be social security. And then it usually just works out and um, nothing else um, bad happens after that. It's pretty easily fixed. But today uh, it happened and of course I automatically went ahead and I said seguro. And the lady started uh, like talking about how she just got here in this country, how she got here to this country and like she didn't have um, any social security or anything, she was legal and all of that stuff. And then they told her, oh no, uh, we're not really uh, talking about um, social security, we're talking about medical insurance. And I don't know why, uh, it took me a while, like for real, it took me a while to actually realize my mistake, uh, maybe because I didn't sleep that all that well today. And I actually had a pretty uh, good day today. Uh, no hard words or hard uh, sessions or anything. But this session in particular, like, um, maybe I was just interpreting and not really, like, listening to the message. I don't know. Something happened. And then all of a sudden, like, a ball came out on top of my head and I was like, damn, why, why didn't I catch this uh, before I, and then, like, why didn't I just caught this like before I actually interpreted what the LEP said to the to the provider right because once the LEP would have said that what I should have done was just to go to the provider and actually let him know um, the mistake that I made right but I didn't and then um, that happened so when that happened I actually like I said oh I have to clarify I have to let the provider know what's going on and I actually did and now, whenever I went back to the LEP, I never even mentioned uh, a seguro. Every time that I said insurance, it was actually seguro medico. And she had insurance for her, because she was pregnant, and for her um, 
uh, unborn child and I believe that for her as well like for medical checkups and stuff she also had insurance so yeah uh, that is a problem that I make a lot and I am going to make a conscious effort to actually whenever I hit air insurance to actually say seguro medico or seguro de salud as in medical insurance or health insurance even if health or medical insurance is not mentioned but you know that it is medical or health insurance so you don't have the same problem that I did and, and that's just a general suggestion and that's just something that I am going to work on to uh, just to improve as an interpreter you know and uh, not to have to be able to explain to a provider what I, I the mistake that I made and well to not make that mistake in the future right and I don't know why I hadn't thought about this before uh, maybe because it never was such a big mess like today but I mean there's always that one time right that makes you um, that makes you conscious about the situation and that actually makes you um, want to go ahead and make a change for the better of course so that was my highlights today and today I am going to answer a question from one of our viewers his name is Chris Rodriguez and he says hey just have a quick question I'm currently taking Altaline for Spanish English interpreting the oral exam lasts about 30 minutes is this exam difficult obviously it will be challenging but at the same time I don't want to have an exaggerated point of view about it do you know thanks in advance and you are very welcome and thank you very much for your question Chris and uh, unfortunately I have no experience with this company or the testing that they provide I did ask in a couple of interpreting groups in Facebook and only one person answered and what this person answers um, she told me that she found it very easy but she says that she would not skip studying and that sounds like a reasonable answer um, whenever um, and then it, it reminded me of the interpretation test that I took for the first company that I used to work for because I remember uh, telling my sister it was on a Thursday the last day that we had our course and then on Friday they gave us a whole day off and we could take the test whenever we wanted and I remember telling my sister on Thursday night I was like oh man I really need to take this test right now like right now like the anxiety is just killing me I just want to get over with it I think I'm pretty good and I think I'm gonna do it great I don't know why I have to wait until tomorrow but unfortunately I had to wait until the next day and the next day before taking the test I was actually studying my ASS off like you will not believe it so um, and um, I, I forgot what I was going to say but I remembered um, I well, actually when I took the test I found it quite easy as well I think I got like a 96 on it I don't remember how long it was or I don't really remember that much about it but I do remember it was easy like um, honestly the studying was the worst part because of course like you're thinking ahead and uh, well you're actually preparing for the unknown right um, so before I get more into what I'm going to say about this I would like to let you know that uh, since I don't have that much information and I couldn't really find that much information except for what they have on the page uh, I am going to give you some recommendations for an interpreting assessment uh, I should say my recommendations for an interpreting assessment like why, uh, what I actually did and I am going to show you two examples because I've actually taken two interpreter assessments one for the first company that I worked for well, actually taken three uh, one for the first company that I worked for and then I took a second one in that very same company to become a medical interpreter and then I took a third one for the company that I am working for now so um, recommendation number one just go ahead and find out anything you can about the test if there is if you can actually talk to a human being like if there's like a mentor or a coach or a trainer that is actually uh, training you for the test 
just go ahead and ask anything, anything um, that you're that actually worries you and everything that you can. Like how long, um, uh, how long are, like, um, like you said, it's 30 minutes. But for example, what's the longest utterance that can appear on a test, right? Um, I remember um, somebody asked me about on the channel uh, before I was doing online sessions and all of that. And they were asking me about the CCHI. And uh, I believe they say that the utterances can be for as long as two minutes. So that's something to watch out for and that's something to prepare. Of course, this is not CCHI. And I would actually like to add that I'm, I'm not certified. I've never taken a certification test, just the tests that are required for me to work at a company. So having said that, that's the type of test that I imagine this is from what I could read on their website. So let's get right to it. After you find out all you can about the test, um, go ahead and uh, if they give you a practice guide, go ahead and study it. Study that and take that as reference. That should be like the main piece of your study session. That should be like the main piece that you're studying. Everything else, you can, of course you can study other material, but I would say the study guide is king. and. Uh, that is where they are going to derive most of the questions and most of the utterances. So go ahead and practice that. And that was what happened with the first interpreter uh, assessment I ever took. They gave us a practice test and you believe me, I was studying like a mother man. I was studying and worrying. <laughs> uh, and then for the second one for the medical interpretation test they also gave us a guide and they gave us like this uh, little uh, course or for things they gave us like a video and like a PowerPoint and so I was taking pictures of everything I was with my phone I was like <laughs> everything every everything so that way I could have it accessible at any time and then I got a lot of vocabulary from that and I pretty much didn't study anything else at that time. And I did pretty well. Uh, so what about if they don't give you a study guide, right? And this happened on the last interpreting assessment that I actually took with the company that I work for now. It was a medical assessment, but they said just practice medical terminology. But they didn't really say uh, what terminology I should practice, right? It was just medical terminology. and. It was uh, pretty much up to me to just decide what I had to study. So it was a little challenging because of that, because they just said, well, it's gonna be medical, so just practice medical terms, right? So what did I do for that? Um, uh, in case, um, before I go into that, if they don't give you a study guide and this is for a company or just for general information, um, if this is for like a company that you're going to be hired with this company, if you pass this test, just find out like what uh, industries you'll be interpreting for like at an entry level job. Um, for example, what companies, what industries, um, and uh, just work with that. For example, if you know that they work with just like uh, elementary schools, with utility companies, with uh, insurance companies or I don't know whatever they work with um, just go ahead and figure out like the technical language for those um, industries for example you could look up the fist, uh, 50 most common words in mobile customer service right um, and the, that should be like a key wording a key element in your search most common most common 50 most common or 100 most common or whatever most common because uh, that's what you're going to be tested on right and they're not going to uh, test you on like some really really specific word that nobody like really even uh, uses right but if it's on if you can find like lists and most of the time you probably can um, and that's how I build on uh, the vocabulary list for um, uh, or Patreon page. I actually put out a medical vocabulary list every week and that's what I look for. I look for the 50 most common, like for example, what was the last one that I did? The 50 most common OBGYN uh, terms, right? And um, 
of course I have the experience so I actually look at this 50 most common things and there's some words that I've never even heard of so of course I don't include them because I want words that I've actually worked with and that I know that just keep on popping up like uh, almost at every session those words are sure to come up and that's what I use of course you don't have the experience so you're gonna have to go off of that 50 list and that will make it daunting and that will make it seem like you can never do it but I mean uh, just have confidence in yourself and I know that at the beginning honestly for me my list um, well not my list but actually once I started working my glossaries they just became huge lists because there was a lot of words that just came on keep kept on coming up but uh, um, I, I already know a lot of those words and uh, like um, what I'm trying to say is that at the beginning since you're so new and you don't have such a big vocabulary it's going to seem like an impossible task so um, once you already have those lists let's say um, you have the 50 most common words for each industry now let's say it's eight industries right that's um, eight times five forty that's four hundred words so I mean you I find it quite impossible for you to actually go ahead and memorize those 400 words so just go ahead and run through the list once and then like things that are most common just scratch those out like just forget about them you know you're going to remember them because you already have them down and uh, just go ahead uh, with the new ones like the most challenging ones and uh, just go ahead and uh, build your list and um, out of those just study them study as much as you can and out of the ones that you're going to study I I promise you I promise you that there are going to be some words some vocabulary that is going to stick very quickly and there's going to be other vocabulary that you are just not going to remember so once you already read to the list once and um, go ahead and test yourself um, even if it's 400 words um, I remember the study material for uh, um, the first company that I worked for it, it was I, it was like 10 pages and I don't even remember how many words it was uh, but it was quite a few of them and I was studying and I was studying of course you see here you have a list right there but if you don't and you actually have to make it yourself um, I think you'll be, you'll be okay with just the first 50 most common words and uh, so build a sheet sheet out of those uh, lists that you actually have and you already scratched those out and you already read it once uh, automatically you're going to know which ones you're going to remember and which ones you're not so just go ahead and uh, write down all of the words that you don't remember uh, as many as they are and go ahead and have it in front of you and just go ahead and study it study it um, if you can have someone help you study that'll be the best because of course um, uh, they can just pick out like uh, they can just do it randomly and faster and it's better and it's not mechanical right uh, because I'll tell you why I said mechanical in a little bit but um, just go ahead and study 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 and uh, don't stop studying until you actually have to take the test I would recommend uh, stop studying an hour or two before the test just relax and do whatever you want before actually taking the test and uh, while you're studying the day before the test I would recommend that you actually study for about 45 minutes to an hour at max and then just take a 15 minute break go outside um, uh, check your messages or whatever but those 15 45 uh, minutes to an hour just like really study study like there should be no distractions you should be only studying and then uh, 15 minutes take your break then go back at it and you're gonna be like that on and off for about three four hours when you hit the three four um, hour mark uh, depending on how you feel if you feel you uh, I would say four hours it should be your hard limit three hours should be a soft limit if you think you can still do another hour then go ahead and do it but once you reach four hours I would say just stop stop studying 
and take a really uh, a long one hour break. If it's your lunch time, go ahead and eat then just relax for the next half an hour, go out for a walk, um, go ahead and look at some of my videos or play a video game, whatever. Uh, whatever you have to do just to distract you and to get your mind off of studying, off of the test. I know it's hard and it's impossible, but just try to do it as much as you can. That way it can relax your mind take you off of the opportunity and that way when you come back, you come back with a fresh mind and then just go ahead and study. Uh, but now this time, just study uh, one or two hours, three, if you really, um, if you're not burnt out. And uh, right at, then that should be your study day. Uh, so you're gonna be studying about four to seven hours that day and then just right after that forget about it uh don't even look at a vocabulary list or anything and just enjoy yourself do whatever um you like uh, relax i mean you earned it right you've been studying seven hours so go ahead and take a break now what if you cannot study uh, seven hours right because you have a job you have other things to do you have responsibilities if you can't, I say um, go ahead and study just like 45 minutes at a time as much as you can and then take the 15 minute break and then go ahead and study just another 45 minutes. If you can get a really good an hour and a half uh, long session, I think um, that is better than not studying at all, right? Um, one thing that I would say is um, just don't lose your um, your head studying. Like, don't be studying like at four or five in the morning when you're falling asleep and you're not even understanding anything. So, just don't burn yourself out. That is uh, number one. It's best to study less and burn out than to actually burn out because when you burn out, um, your mind is it's gonna be stuck. It's not even going to be remember anything. Um, Right now, um, I'm actually studying, uh, but for a class, I'm doing, um, what do you call it, um, an, an open school. So I don't have a teacher or anything. I have to actually go ahead and uh, just on my own, just um, look up. They give you like the resource material, like the initial things. So I actually have to look up a lot of things on my own and actually have to read and there's a time that i just feel so burned out like i know like i was, i read a paragraph and then i don't even know what it says and i know that's the time to quit right like um, quit and uh, just um, come back the next day to it um another thing that i would say is that study hard study as hard as you can like don't mess around and don't waste any time studying and uh, go ahead and talk yourself up to be like, yeah, I got this. And every time uh, you get a more correct answers, just build that confidence. I'm uh, like, yeah, I got this, man. I'm gonna get that test and I'm gonna do so good. Look at all the words and all the vocabulary that I'm learning. I'm doing so great, man, that test is nothing. Uh, and actually feel yourself uh, actually passing that test and feel how good it actually is to pass that test and how good it is to actually be studying and putting the work in and uh, be proud of yourself because um, you're doing this to be a better you, right? So actually talk yourself up and be proud of yourself for doing all of this. And uh, something that might sound silly is that uh, take 10 minutes out of your day. Uh, just take 10 minutes out of your day to like consciously um, um, I know this is gonna sound silly, but just close your eyes and then just imagine that you're taking that test and that all of the interpretations are just flowing right through you. Like uh, whenever they give you something, you just imagine yourself interpreting flawlessly and uh, without an effort, effortlessly, and uh, just doing so great on the test and just uh, nailing every question, nailing every utterance, and uh, just do it for 10 minutes, set a timer, and uh, visualize yourself actually um, acing this test. And now, this what does this have to do with studying? This is not studying or anything, but it'll ease your mind because it'll put you in like a forward, it, it, it'll 
like move your mind to the future into that position so if your mind can actually visualize you relaxing and uh, doing the test and actually um, being really good at it the time that you actually come to take the test it'll be like even though it's not the, the same thing your mind will feel a little bit more at ease because it'll feel like it's already been through the situation of course it never got to the real situation but one of the things that they found out about the mind is that the mind cannot tell what's real in its imagination or inside of its mind than what's real in front of you like there's no difference between that your mind can't tell either of those apart so if you can actually convince your mind that you already took the test and that you did very good then the time that you're actually going to take the test um, it'll make it easier uh, of course it won't make it like the easiest and you're actually going to make the test no it's going to be hard but uh, it'll just uh, give your mind a little bit of a rest and it'll make it easier to relax the day of the test so uh, yeah I already talked about being relaxed and not getting burned out if you get burned out just leave it to the next day another thing is that when studying if you don't have a study partner you can be creative I mean nowadays we have a lot of um, apps that can actually uh, help you practice vocabulary like um, you put a um, I think there's even for interpretation but, um, pairs and things like that so just be creative go ahead and look out for these resources and if you don't have a resource that you actually like uh, one really easy thing that you can do is that you can actually record yourself um, um, actually testing yourself record yourself the first time uh, for example you can be like uh, okay what does a uh, cell phone interpret as right like um, you take your, rec your recording app and you're like cell phone then you give yourself two or three minutes and then let's say you're testing your English say cell phone yourself two or three seconds then uh, your red cell phone now after two or three seconds go ahead and give the correct answer celular and then just do it like that while you're testing yourself and then uh, right after you're finished testing yourself um, if you actually got the correct answers um, you can just go ahead and just randomly like at any point in that session you can go ahead and just uh, put it uh, on that uh, time and then uh, it'll give you a random word in English or in Spanish or in whatever language pair you're working in and if it says it in Spanish and you were doing it in English then you know that you have to like go back like 10 seconds and that's a really uh, great study tool and it's easy to make and it's time saving because you don't actually have to be making it like you can actually make it while you're studying and then use that as the study just a little hack I hope it works for you. Uh, other than that, uh, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I would just say good luck, and I'm sure you'll do fine. Um, but like, uh, uh, like this uh, lady said, uh, don't skip studying. Uh, uh, other than that, just eat healthy, and get some exercise, and um, get a good night's sleep. I know it's going to be hard to get a good night's sleep because you're worrying and you're so anxious about actually acing the test. But do, just do your best. And I said the day of the test, just if you can, go ahead and uh, take your cheat sheet with you, like those really hard words that you really couldn't remember. Go ahead and take your cheat sheet with you and just study it all the way to the test if, you, uh, if you're able to. And um, I would say just stop studying about an hour before the test or two. But uh, if you want to cram it out, and uh, just go ahead and practice until you actually take the test that way it's fresher in your mind then just go ahead and do it um, this is just going to be just um, like personal choice in what you do in that sense so um, I'm sorry I couldn't have uh, more advice into this test or anything I hope that helps so that will be and um, good luck in your test let me know how it goes uh, that'll be pretty much for me today uh, so uh, please leave your questions or comments and I will answer some of them on the next session. Remember that I'll be here every Monday through Friday after work. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you liked the video and have not done so for more content and don't forget to share. I've been interpreting. Goodbye.